Basically, it's jumping to find the inverse of this. Well, we already have this set for y. But the main important thing I would probably say to do is just to go ahead and distribute to simplify this. So you'd have y equals 3x plus 1. Plus 3. Plus 3, thank you. Now I can swap the x and the y. Okay, And then we just go ahead and solve for y. Therefore, now to solve for y, I'll divide by 3 on both sides. So I have y equals x minus 3 over 3. Now I could rewrite that as the y equals 1 third x minus 1 if I wanted to. But either way, um, we want to read now, once we solve for y, we can replace that with f inverse. So you'd write it like this, f inverse of x. OK. So now what we're going to do, though, if you guys just think about this, just look at the equation. Because we don't know. You guys might know what the graph looks like. You guys can, might be able to visualize what the graph looks like, but you might not be able to. But let's just think about it. If I plug in a number in for x, think of any number, 0, am I only going to get one answer for f inverse of x or for y, whatever it is? Think about any number. No matter what number you plug in for x, is there any opportunity where you're going to get two different answers? No. no. So the answer to is the inverse of function you can say this is obviously a function. Um, this is going to produce a line. And um, f inverse of x is a function. Or you could just write in, yes, it is a function. Okay, That is an example of a function.